So this piano, um, which is a 1838 approximately uh, Meacham and Company piano of mine, uh, will be going to the Albany Institute of History and Art in Albany, New York, which is very close to where it was manufactured in, of course, Albany, New York. So uh, prior to it going to the museum, uh, a friend of mine, Kyle O'Greedy, uh, suggested that why don't I sample the instrument? So by sampling the instrument, that means uh, basically making a recording of all the individual strings and all of the individual keys, and then from there recording them, and then splicing those, uh, uh, the recording up by note and distributing it into a piece of software, which then lets it be playable on a keyboard like this. And here's a sample of what I have so far. So you can kind of hear the. Oops. So you can kind of hear the difference between the two. Um, upper range. So there's sort of the comparison of the kind of immortalizing the uh, Meacham piano in the form of digital um, technology. And basically the way that was done is with these microphones here, you can show these microphones. So we have three different microphones, one in the low end, one in the mid range, and one in the upper range. And basically taking those three and recording simultaneously into uh, studio software, multi-track software, in this case I'm using Cubase, and I have uh, three different tracks that I'm using to represent for each microphone. And once I do that, I'm going to record each individual note one at a time okay. through here. Um, and the interesting thing is that I can then take the mixture of the various uh, microphone, uh, the various microphones uh, positioning, and actually pan them and pan the lower end to the left, the middle microphone to the middle, and the, um, the right hand side uh, microphone over to the right. So that kind of gives the sound that when you're playing it, a sort of uh, the traveling from left to right in stereo. So that'll be permanent. Once the piano is gone, we will still have that, which is actually really cool. Um, the other thing I just wanted to add is that I did sample uh, more than one type of sound. So some of the sounds are actually uh, muted. Um, so I want you to show on the screen here what I have. Um, so I'm using a software inside of Cubase, of a, a virtual instrument VST, it's called called Reactor, and um, is that showing fairly well? Mm. And then, um, so if I go into that program, you'll see that this program is what represents uh, the various recordings of the keys, and it's pretty interesting. So what I'm going to do is take this various recordings of Meacham, record, of, uh, Meacham samples, and um, hopefully that worked. So now what we have is a muted version of the of the Meacham, which basically I had put some rubber mats down on the strings so that it would kind of mute the sound of the piano. So for example. So 
So that muted action was also recorded. So this is actually like a separate instrument that uh, was sampled and can be played uh, separately. So here it is. So it's not quite the same, of course, because it's a muted effect. Let me just go back for comparisons back to the other one, which hopefully will be this. Oops. Where is it? Put that back. Is that going to be it? So here we're back to the original. So if I take that sound and go back here, and go back here to the sampled. Which describes what's happening. So, once the piano is in the museum, we still have the ability to play the Meacham piano here. And my plan is to try to get a couple more different samples like this. And of course, there's a lot of uh, cutting and splicing. There's uh, 73 keys. So you have to take a large file, cut it into 73 keys, into 73 different files, and each of those files is then represented to be played back by this keyboard using the uh, reactor software.